This competition for colonies and for empire is going to spread into North Africa. In the 1880s, the British created a protectorate in Egypt because they were afraid that the Egyptians would not be capable of maintaining and defending the Suez Canal. The French became alarmed by this British move and moved into North Africa themselves, getting uh, Algeria and Morocco. When one European country created a colony in Africa, all the others felt the need to do the same. It was a matter of national pride when ultimately all of Africa would eventually be carved up by some European power. Portugal grabbed much, much of the western coast. Germany had the east, eastern Africa. Italy had Libya. Belgium colonized the Congo and Central Africa, and so on and so forth. Often European powers were close together, and the borders of their colonies were so difficult to determine that crises and little skirmishes would erupt. One skirmish that escalates into full-blown war is known as the Boer War in South, America, South Africa between 1899 and 1902. South Africa had originally been a part of the Dutch, but when the British moved into the Cape of Good Hope in 1815, many Dutch settlers, as we call them Boers, were unwilling to live under British rule. They decided to move inland. In the 1870s, the Boers... In, 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 in inland southern Africa discover enormous mineral wealth, particularly in gold, copper, and diamonds. The area became quickly the largest diamond producer in the world. So the British decide to go in and exploit these minerals. The Boers resist. Men and women, women, women and children fight tooth and nail against the British. The Boers are going to use guerrilla tactics to defend their lands, and the British will use concentration camps to control and contain the Boers. The conditions, as you can imagine, are going to be horrible, and this exacerbates the, the hatred of the Boers against the British. Eventually, the British will, be, will defeat the Boers, and wisely accept moderate Boers as allies rather than subjugating them. Britain would create a new nation, the Union of South America, sorry, South Africa, in, in 1910. It was a semi-independent commonwealth within the British Empire, and many Boers would participate in it. Of course, white South Africans still oppressed a very large uh, population of black Africans, who had no power in this new nation at all. Other areas of the world would be colonized as well. The French would go find Indochina. You know it today as, uh, as, as Vietnam and, and Thailand, that area. Uh, the Russians will go for China. Several countries will go and try to find the, new, the Pacific Rim. The British are going to acquire Hong Kong. The French, Tahiti. The Japanese, Korea. And the United States will eventually get, get Hawaii. But European imperialism was not completely without its critics, even in Europe. There was a great deal of brittle criticism of European colonization and of treatment by Europeans of other countries and, and native peoples. This, comes, uh, this is best summarized by a man named J.A. Hobson. Hobson and, and, and his fellow critics would argue that European nations should, should, should focus on the problems at home. They should invest their surplus capital at home rather than the globe and help the poor, the sick, and the unemployed. The white man's burden was not working. Critics of European imperialism noted that Europeans were cruel and exploitative towards native, na towards native populations. They were not ex working for the betterment of their quote-unquote brown brothers, but were benef benefiting the Europeans alone. Europeans exploited the resources of their subjects and of their colonies and didn't use any of the profits to help the indigenous peoples. They took tight tribal lands for farming and grazing and didn't care about the plight of the people uh, that were displaced. When the native peoples rebelled against their oppressors, European technology was ruthlessly used in order to crush native uprisings, machine guns against spears and bows and arrows. Imperialism was an arena of for playing out frictions and a competition between the great European powers. Unfortunately, it did not relieve tensions in Europe. In fact, it escalated them. Conflicts broke out between European regions over colonies and over areas the influence uh, which within European itself. As nations rushed to achieve ever larger colonial ambitions and even ever greater power on the European continent, you start to see tensions grow. Nations manufactured uh, increasing, increasingly larger stockpiles of weapons and competed to increase the size of their, uh, their armed forces. For, ex for example, Germany wanted a worldwide empire just like Britain, Britain did, so she started building up a navy for, for defense and expansion. 
This scares the British, and increased German militarism prompted other European nations to make secret alliances for their mutual defense. Eventually, all it's going to take is a minor issue, a minor trigger, that's going to make a, a, trigger a bigger conflict that was going to bring almost all of Europe to war. Ironically, even though the most minor scraps had been taken in the European powers, the period of 1871 to 1914 was a peaceful year time period. In fact, it was the longest un uninterrupted peace in Western Europe since the Roman Empire. Now, there were occasionally you know, minor conflicts, but they were primarily in the Balkans. There were also a number of war scares, but they never broke out in the war. The main reason that they didn't break out was the restraint of Germany. When Germany was unified in the 1870s, the balance of power in Europe changed for the first time since the fall of Napoleon. But after 1871, the new Germany began to dominate the European scene. Compared to other European countries, it was huge geographically, demographically, and economically. It was now the new 400-pound gorilla on the European bloc.